Chairman. Thanks for joining us here today at the O2. Uh, we, before we start, we'd like to thank the O2 for hosting this press conference at the Muhammad Ali I Am The Greatest exhibition. And he was the greatest, let's face it. And it's a, a great honour to be here and uh, announcing, I think, a cracking card for the 30th of April at the Copper Box here in London. Um, we're topping the bill with the WBO Middleweight Championship, the world featuring Billy Joe Saunders, undefeated champion from Hatfield in England, against Matt Bursak from Kiev in Ukraine, um, former WBO Intercontinental Champion, and he's, he's um, promoted and looked after by K2, uh, who are the Klitschko's promotional team. Um, for Bill, it's uh, I think it's one of those fights where he can't afford to slip up. We don't want to be a banana skin because we're looking for a, a very big fight that we're putting together for um, the new year. Uh, sorry, for the, uh, for, for the summer. An open air show we're hoping to do. But as I say, I don't want to take the fight. For Bill, we're trying to keep him fit, keep him. Uh, he's not going to have big gaps in between fights. So he's taking this fight, which is a, you know, it's quite a, I think, it's a potential, as I say, a potential banana skin. Uh, Bursak, if you look at his record, he has a win over uh, Blackwell, who um, is fighting uh, Christian Banks Jr. in a couple of weeks' time. Um, you know, he does come to fight, it's going to be, he's going to be pressing Bill, it's a big opportunity for him and to save the Bill, he can't afford to slip up on this one. And on the undercard, we've got a vacant European Cruiserweight Championship between Oberlin McKenzie and Derby, or more like London now, yeah, yeah. and Derby and East Edmund. Uh, he's against Dmitro Kushner, again from Kiev in the Ukraine, so it's 23-1-1. This is a mandatory, uh, oh sorry, this is a, a, a vacant side of the fight between the number one and number two in Europe. We've also got on the card the British Feather, Featherweight Championship between Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Walsh, who's the champion, and he's fighting uh, James Tennyson, who's the only manager mark today from Belfast in Northern Ireland. James has set, just signed a promotional deal with us, as has Ryan, so it'll be quite an interesting fight. I think it's got, it's got the, this has got the look of a, a real top quality domestic bust up. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, as I say, we've got a good card here. We've announced some other fights that are going on in the next week or so. Um, 30th of April, Copper Box, be there. You can see some good fights. And Billy Joe Saunders, I'm hoping, gets through this one, does it in style, and goes on to get into the big fights that he wants. This is the one he's got to get over to get to the big fight. And we've got a very, very big fight lined up for him, provided he does that in the summer. Anyway, I know you've got lots of questions to ask, so please feel free to do so. Billy, how long did you come down from on high after the big fight? Uh, you know, it took a good week, but, um, you know, it's, it's a dream since I've been a kid, so I was a good thing. But now it's uh, you know back down and I've got a job to do. So I'm going to be coming over with this title song and um, <coughs> win the title and get beat. So I was world champion, I defend it and uh, try to be put up there in the likes of the Kawasaki's and the Williams. I mean uh, that's the other one's goal. One is to keep busy. Um, like I'm, I'm out there again, hopefully in uh, July sometime. So that is a bit, you know, you've got to work your way, even though I'm world champion, I've still got to work my way into these big fights. That's the reason I've got a um, tough test coming over. You know, he's beat Nick Blackwell. He's won the points with Martin Murray. Uh, he's beat Brian Vera. So, you know, he's got some good names on his record. Um, and here comes the fight. So it's like some challenges like him coming over, beating him, moving on to the next level again. You know, and hopefully, um, you know, test the test the wall on the super fights. Well, it's you know, everyone's got big fights at the moment. You know, you've got you, Golovkin has got a fight. Um, the talks of me and him, Frank and that. I think talks broke down. Um, so he's fighting someone, you've got Carnes obviously fighting Alvarez, uh, you've got Blackwell fighting uh, Eubank, so there's not really nobody available for a big fight now, but you know, Persak, you can't look past him, he's a tough, tough fella who comes to fight, and you know, I know how I felt when I got that call, sound and part of the world title, so I know how he's going to be training and feeling 
Bodies on Kamakai for anybody who's on the tree hitting right now. No, I'm not the champion. So you see this as a building fight towards one of those big fights? Yeah, yeah, I'm not looking at it as a, as a warm up one. I think this is a world top fight. So I'm looking at this to, um, for one, you know, I'll be using it at the training camp, getting into shape, obviously. Um, for two, more ring, ring time. So, you know, it's more, um, it's more of a learning. It's a tough test, I know, but I think I'm capable of taking care of it. Who is the ideal opponent for that big style of fight? You know, I've sat down and talked to Frank um, and the manager, so, you know, we, we've gone for a few names, but, you know, Frank's got to be right to firm in, in terms of um, in terms of opponents and whatnot. So, you know, that you've got your Khan and, and uh, Canelo fighting soon. You know, you've got your Blackwell and um, and uh, you make, and also you've got Golovkin. But uh, I spoke with Frank last week and I said that I would like the Glofkin fight or something. But that's what he's asked for. We're talking to him, but obviously this is a... I'll get this one out of the way. Frank, this is obviously a K2 fighter as well, though. Yeah. yeah. How did first that come up? Because you were talking about Golovkin today. No, well, what, what happened was, you know, being really realistic, the Golovkin fight is a stadium fight. It's a massive fight. And this time of year, we can't get into a stadium. So it's not going to happen. He's not going to sit on his backside and wait until July for a fight to happen. He's got to keep busy, and, uh, and that's really why we're up where we're at. Bursak is a, you know, he's going to make him think about a lot of things. He's a, you know, look at his record, and you'll see he's been with some very good fighters. He's beat some good fighters. He's beat the guy that Chris Eubanks Jr. is fighting. Like, you know, so, you know, you look at that and you think to yourself, why is it that, you know, why is it Chris Eubanks Jr. there? But, he, you know, he doesn't want to know the fight. He doesn't want to know the bill. They talk about it, keep mentioning it, but when it comes down to it, it don't happen. And we'd give up on that one. So Bill said, get me Golovkin, we want to do a fight here in the UK, but you've got to get over this one to get to that stage. And that's, that's, uh, that's a big call. And I've got to take that out to Bill. You know, Bill's, to, Bill's not trying to find anything. He's never, ever once in all the time that I've been with him, him from day one, said, I'm not fighting this guy, I don't want to fight that guy. All it is is, how much am I getting? A professional fighter, how much? Do you want to know about it? What am I going to get? He's a fighting man. There's none of that nonsense that you can get with some guys. You just hear, hear show up, be there. And, you know, when he's at 100%, he's a tough, tough fighter to be. He's a better fighter than people give him credit for. You know, when you look back at the, uh, the Olympians, to me, he's the best one out of a lot of them, that Olympic generation, he's the best one of those guys. And it's still, we've still not seen much of it. You know, it's still got, I still think it, you know, we've only seen 75% of it. And if anybody's going to give Golovkin a tough, tough fight, <coughs> Billy Joe Saunders, who has got a fantastic boxing ring, and can punch. You know, a lot of people look at, you know, say, oh, he's not a big puncher. Go and ask a few of the fellas that he's had on the floor. And Andy Lee will tell you, he showed, him, you know, he showed a lot of heart in his last fight. He put him down twice with two you know, tremendous punches. And I just think that um, as much as uh, I'm a big fan of Golovkin, if anybody's going to be, if anybody's going to be, you know, people each other So that's what we're able to do. The stadium fight's not going to be Eubank then. Say that? The stadium fight's not going to be Well, Eubank, look, we are not, he's world champion. Chris Eubanks Jr. How many times? Three, four times. I don't even know. If you become work, you know, trying to deal with his father, you lose the will to live. I mean, he just. There's no logic to anything you're doing. I mean, it's, he wants recognition. He keeps using my name now. I'm world champion. He wants to use my name to keep him in talks and, and around, the, around the belt. But listen, the bottom line is, he don't want to fight me again because he knows he'll get beat again. Well, that's, that's, so, that, that's simple as it is. He really? got offered the fight. Frank offered him money where if he wanted to, um, he could retire, and his dad could retire, you know, instead of keep taking his money off him. So, he don't want it, he clearly don't want it, he's fighting someone I've beat in 2012. <coughs> so I told Frank, look, give me into the big fights. I look at you, mate, and I don't really think, look, to the fans it's a big fight, but to me, if I box them again, what rations I do from going in and learning from that first one, I'll beat him by a blindfold on. And especially the confidence that I've got are winning the world title as well. They don't fancy the fight. And I'll tell you what shows you they don't fancy it. He's fighting for the British title instead of fighting for the world title. That tells you all you need to know. Fighting for the British title was the first bid that uh, Mick Hennessy won. I think his end of it is about 100 grand. 
he'd have got seven times that to fight Bill. Now, go and figure, go and figure that one. If you want it, he wants the revenge. That's how much he wants the revenge. He's fighting the British title. And, and I've done this print in this press conference about Chris Eubank Jr. because we just, you know, we just want to go over and get banging the head against the wall. It's just hard work, um, and we're not going there anymore. The, he's a champion. He's the guy, when you look at the record book, it says Billy Joe Saunders beat Chris Eubank Jr. And that's all that matters. He's the world champion. He's fighting a guy who does want to fight him, and he's grabbed this opportunity in Merced. That's where we are. He's got a tough fight in his hands, he wins that one, and he's got something to aim for now, Bill. He wants to fight Golovkin, you've got to beat this guy, and you've got to do it in style. style. Do that, and then you've got your summer fight. So it's up to Bill now. Everything we're doing now, we're opening all the doors for him. It's for him now to get in there, show what he's capable of doing, show what I know he's, I, I've got all the confidence he can do, is to get, get to the situation in summer he's facing, what a lot of people believe he's the best fighter in the world. And there's not a lot of people doing it. That's the difference between him and Chris Eubanks Jr. Right. That's the difference. I know you said you didn't want this to be about you, but I, I do just have one question on that subject. Between the two of you, at what point, if you offered him to fight seven times, at what point do you say, right, no more, we're never going to fight again? We're there. We've done that. And I'll just give him to you. I'm, I'm saying don't speak fight. about him, but I'm going to speak about him again. He spoke to a fall for the world title games. He had the interim title to fight against was it, uh, Jacobs. Sorry. Why did he take that? He's fighting for the British title. He's not fighting for the world title against Jacobs, and he's not fighting Bill. That I've tells you all you need to know. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Chris Eubank will never be world champion unless he, unless he fights a vacant belt against someone who gets a week's notice or a complete nobody. He'll never be world champion. He's not good enough to be world champion. British level is his level. Frank, the fact you mentioned it in the name Golovkin, it's how long it's going to take mandatory fight for Golovkin later this year. Is that the case? Well, I don't know what they're going to do, and there's a lot, you know, that's up to them. But, uh, whether that will go on or not is another thing. It may go on, it may not. I don't think it will go on. I don't think, you know, Amir Khan's fighting, uh, fighting. We'll see what happens with that. That's, uh, you know, we'll have views on that fight. <coughs> I just don't see that. Um, but those two will get it on yet. I think that, that fight goes on, that's going to be next year. See, I don't see that as, a, as taking place yet. And I think that, you know, Bill being in there, where he's at, he's in that mix, he's got, you know, he's got himself well and truly there, purely on, purely on the fact that he's won the British Commonwealth, European, fought the world title, and he's, he's undefeated. He's got himself right in the mix with those, with those names, and he's going to get, if we get through this, he's going to I've got off these people who were sexy people coming through. Yeah, I mean, they, they, you know, as David just said, you know, you've got the situation with, uh, with Alvarez, and I'm, I'm sure neither side wants to show their hands. Me reading between the lines, I don't think that fight is going to happen. And that's why I believe that we're in a position <coughs> where we'll be fighting for that. We'll be fighting uh, in a unification. Sandy, with the greatest respect to Ogle, he's, he's another guy. You know, he's done a, he's done a, Mark's done a brilliant job of him. I mean, you know, a really great job of him. You know, I mean, they never ever say who, it's just where, when, how much. That's what this business should be about. And all this nonsense that goes on in between the stock fights from having his rubbish. And that's what he did. You know, he's very unlucky. Went out to Argentina, very unlucky to. Yeah, 11 day notice, you know what I mean? I was in Kennerif when I got the car and he called me up and it was 11 day notice. I go over there, I do a good job, I do a great job on him, you know? And 
know, and as I said, I'm gonna keep going, you know, and at this time in my career, I'm at the point where I think it's happy days, time, happy days, you know. Like sitting here beside Trump Warren is, is, is an achievement for me and, and, and for him to, to do the first bid and win the first bid and win the fight in, in the UK. I'm so happy for that, you know. I never have never ever have a promoter in my life, ever. And I have a promoter, I feel like I'm a team right around me. So no, we're just gonna give it credit and we're gonna go for it all out, you know, and I'm gonna I, I'm not gonna let them down. I never wanna let Trump down on the minute. I'm not gonna train on arm myself, you know, I wanna win this better than <coughs> We try and get a rematch, but you don't want to know. You don't want to know. He, he, I don't. He never want to know. You know. He knows. He told me I won it twice at the end of the fight. You know. And wherever you see a, a champion win a belt and, and win, uh, win the belt and put it under the ring, you never even walk around and would still uh, take a picture with the belt. He put it. He put it on on the on the ring. The same. I forget it. Put back through the ring. So, he can know, he, he know he lost, you know, but it's not up to him anyway. It was the team and the referee and the judges, and it was a fair, it was an unfair call. Dylan, you probably got any pressure on your behalf, on the IBF, or all yeah, the rematch? Yeah, we asked for rematch and they knocked it back. They did, they did. IBF knocked it back. Knocked it back, yeah. And it was, uh, you know, the board did as well. I mean, everybody to their credit did what they had to do, but they knocked it back. They said they watched it and they didn't feel it. So, you know, it's the old story, but we did send them the following day uh, the spec stavers are doing two for one. Yeah. Even, even, even the, when you watch a fight again, if you're going to give him, give him every round, you don't give him the 12 round. The 12 round, he haven't touched him once. And when you see they give him the 12 round as well, you know what I mean? You can you think, so you can think and leave it out, right? is that right? Give him every round, but not the 12 round. They can't touch me once in 12 rounds and they're going to give them 12 rounds as well. So it was an unfair call for me. James, Brett, where is the next sort of stage where he obviously gets through this? It's true. Fight, you know, the, he'll be up there fighting. He's, he's ranked here, get a, you know, I'll make sure that Owen gets another shot. I'll do that. And, you know, he's got a tough fight here. There's no full run conclusion. He's got a tough fight, but I believe him. And I know that, you know, Martin, I know, is going to do a great job. So. He, when he gets in the ring, all he does is give nothing less than 100%, and uh, we'll, we'll stick with him. That's, that's uh, where I am. When you look at his record, he's got the most deceiving record of any fighter you can look at. You know, you think all the last minute sub jobs that he's taken, but he's put together a, a real sh big string of uh, wins, and also, more importantly, he's shown that he deserved to be there. <coughs> he showed that in the world, so he should be really world champion sitting here now. With that, with, World Championship belt. James, most of your fight for a ten of them, I think, have ended inside two rounds. Are you expecting a tougher time with Ryan Fortune in April? Yeah, definitely. You know, I don't necessarily go out looking for the stoppage of a percent of stuff. I'll take it though. Either way, every fight I train there for a distance, you know. Jack James, this is an interesting career move for you. Where do you see things, how do you see things mapping up in the future? Yeah, it's a massive, it's a massive uh, step forward in my career, you know, I feel this move is going to bring my career to the next level, it's going to bring in titles, and that's exactly what I want them to already be. Billy, what did you do with the first second, like, you seen much of him, and what do you think of his strength? Yeah, I remember him watching uh, in box Nick Blackwell, <coughs> a close fight, but, um, you know, he comes forward in your face, and he can make it very awkward for a good fighter, a good boxer. He don't stop coming forward. You know, he can punch as well. So, you know, it's more of a thinking game for me you now. I've got to get me um, my boxing, boxing head on. But yeah, most definitely, he's um, you know he, he's boxing good fellas. You know, you know, Martin Murray. He took Martin Murray to our rounds. But for me, I'm looking to make a statement. I'm not. I'm not looking to take him 12. I'm going to try and look to do a better job. And uh, the Martin Murray and a couple of the others have done. So it's more of a statement. No, I had a, <coughs> had a bit of time out with the family. Come back down, been back in the gym now for about three or four weeks, about four weeks, and um, you know, slowly taking it down now and getting ready for all the R graft. But um, you now it's, it's, it's more, 
it's got me excited now to be fair that I've got a date, I've got an opponent because it's something I can look for and, and work towards my goal for because you know, like I said, I don't want to be a one fight champion and been beaten and you know, anybody, anything can happen in boxing you know, if, I, if I take this fella lightly and think I can cut corners and this and that I could uh, come unstuck so you know, I've got to make sure everything's going to perfection Did you do anything in particular to celebrate or you know, buy yourself any kind of treat? No, not really. Just um, you know, like uh, family time with kids. Really, I mean, when you're away, a long time training, you know, not seeing them. So it's, it's nice when you come back and let your head down and um, spend a bit of time. With them. So that's all I've been doing, really. Who have always been very confident, guy. But how did you win the world title? You know, it's always something I knew as a as a child and as a kid growing up from boxing. I always knew I'd be world champion. It's just when. And uh, like I said, Frank's done a very good job coming through. And um, <clears throat> I think he's been around a good, good people. Obviously, I've got Frank Warren as my uh, promoter, uh, Daniel from and Jimmy, my manager, and Jimmy Tibbs as my trainer. And I think, you know, all work together, all spur each other off. You know, I felt really, really good. And so when I knew I had a good, strong team around me, I knew nothing was stopping me. And um, I, st I still feel the same now. Well, yeah, I think that. You know, now I'm a world champion, it's a point to prove. And I know that, you know, when you're at the top, it's, uh, it's you know, people's coming for you. And they're not just coming, turning up, they're, they're coming. And you've got to be ready for it. There's plenty of these guys, you know, that's what it is. It's like an all-bill coming yeah. for you, you know. It's an opportunity, I'm going to go and grab it, I'm going to do it. And that's what that first second do. That's what he's going to do, he's coming here to get it. And he's going to have to be 100%. You know, Jim and I were talking at Anfield, and the three of us were talking about it over there. You know, less than 100% won't be good enough. He's got to be 100%. I think as well, if you're going to put yourself in the, in the mix of these big fights, you've got to dish out performances. It's not just about getting the win. I think it's how you look. And uh, to put myself in these big fights, I know that I've got to look a million dollars. So, um, now I'll get my rewards after. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, listen, boxing, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a funny game, anything can happen. I think you've got to be ready for everything. Um, I won't leave nothing on turn, and uh, I'll be make sure I'm fit enough for 20 rounds if I have to go. So, yeah, 12 rounds will be training for, But I'll be looking to make a statement at this point. Have we got any other questions? <coughs> Excuse me, can I take this opportunity to thank Mr. Warren? So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Warren and Queensbury for giving James Tennis from this chance. Believe me, this kid is from the <coughs> He hasn't got here by design, he hasn't got a big you know, family boxing background. He's got here from will, from determination. And yes, he's got a lot of knockouts on his record. But if you look through the opponents that he's knocked out, and he hasn't knocked them out, they'll show you that this kid is quality. A highly decorated amateur, and believe me, he's going to get this opportunity. And Ram Walsh is a great, great champion. He fought Lee Selby, but nobody else would fight Lee Selby. Now, no one really wants to fight Ram Walsh, and no one wants to fight James Tennyson. And believe me, this will be one of the fights of the night. <coughs> Thank, you. Well, Thank you. I fully, fully agree with what Mark's saying. It will be a great fight. It's an all good fight. You know, that's what's happened between the two. The board will be fight. And, uh, you know, Ryan, you know it. If you want to see Ryan Walsh, you've all seen him fight on our shows. He doesn't do anything else other than come to fight. And it's the same with James. I think they'll see some fireworks in tonight. Anyway, thanks very much. Appreciate you all coming along. And uh, we'll give you details of the uh, other fights on the undercard in the next week or so. Thanks, guys. Right, if we can keep on.